Hi, I'm Jill McBride Baxter, and I've been a sports law attorney for 30 years, and a coach's kid, and a coach's wife. I get up every day to protect people, be an advocate, and their trusted advisor. Let's get after it. Okay, so Grace, um, tell me about what coaches need to know about social media, in particular, how to work with their staff at their university or pro team. Okay, well, you need to know that social media is the front porch to your franchise or program. That is often the first interaction that someone will have in this day and age. Um, so what's on there matters. And your social media staff wants, and I know because I've been one on a pro team and a college in, within a college athletic department, your social media team wants to have open dialogue and conversation with you and work. They want to partner with you to make sure that uh, what they're doing benefits you, benefits them, is, you know, the, the best content it can be. That being said, best content it can be includes access, access to your players, access to your practices, access to your events. Like, you know, some coaches, for example, and I understand this, want like team bonding to just be behind closed doors team bonding. Like, oh yeah, that is valid. <laughs> but consider occasionally the impact that it might have on a recruit or a fan to be able to witness something like that wow, that's so cool that head coach so-and-so organized this thing for his players. I really like this guy. I'm glad he's leading our program. Right. Or, wow, this is such a cool thing that they did. I, I, a recruit, want to be a part of that. So it's all about, you know, compromise, but that all stems from communication. So have a relationship with your social media staff. Okay, so, you know, I know pro and college is different. So college, let's talk about recruiting because okay. that is such a big part of what college coaches do, do. It, and you know having the best players guess what it, it does matter <laughs> yeah the team with the best players wins oh shocking but anyways so one thing that I <laughs> I would say is like a lot of adults coaches adults you mean they're older <laughs> I older? didn't say that no <laughs> A lot of coaches and have a disconnect, and understandably so, with 16-year-olds. I wouldn't expect a 55-year-old to know what a 16-year-old cares about in this day and age. It's been yeah. a while since they were 16. How about the and Snapchat the world, and the streaks? The world has changed. So, for example, you might not even know that something like Snapchat streaks exists, and you might not get why that would matter. But the reality is, is that... Stuff like that is important to your recruits. Like, they care about cool hype videos because they want to see themselves in that. They care about, you know, I know programs kind of have already done this, getting photos in a uniform on their official. Um, and you might be thinking, oh, like they're picturing themselves wearing this a year from now. But what those guys are probably thinking is, I can't wait to get these photos so I can post them on Instagram because I'm going to look so cool for all my friends back at school. So just <laughs> have an understanding that what you might prioritize or not understand is going to be something that means a lot to recruits. What is a Snapchat streak? <laughs> I didn't even know what this was until I talked to a younger kid and he's telling me about streaks and I was just sitting there going, what are you talking about? Well, I know I will, about it now, but at the time, I was like, what? So I will just say that I don't think your whole recruiting strategy should be based around Snapchat streaks, but basically it's just the number of consecutive days that um, you send a video or photo to someone on Snapchat or in the, and they send one back. That's the... That's a streak. And if you break the streak, does that mean you're and not you recruiting them anymore? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's so hard. It's like, oh my God. I, I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> okay. How can you work with software? Because um, we kind of talked, touched on this a little bit about software that maybe your organization has that you don't realize has that could also impact recruiting. Software that a university would have. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess 
you know, if you're interested in doing more, if you have that level of interest, again, talk to your social media staff, ask them, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Understand that your, and I'm sure you already think this way, your roster are ambassadors to their networks for your team. So getting hands in, getting content in the hands of those people um, is important. And there is, you know, services and software out there now to facilitate that. Your social media staff would know more about it. But understand that that's something that your social media staff might be interested in already. Uh, but they are probably undervalued, underfunded, and yeah. they need someone like you, a coach, to move the needle on that. Like when you ask for something as a head coach or an offensive coordinator or whatever, you're, you have the ear of the decision makers in the department more so than your head of social media does. Um, so sometimes, yeah, like they need your help in, in making a better situation for the both of you. Well, you were talking about a software that could actually like disseminate all the information yeah. to everybody on your team. Yeah. And then they can then post that. And it's quality content that right. was created by your, your exactly. graphics department. And and I thought that was, you know, really, you know, valuable whether you're, uh, you know, especially for colleges for, right. for the recruiting. How does that transfer over into the pro? I mean, when you were dealing with the pros and they're, you know, in the scouting department, they're scouting players, but they're also trying to get undrafted free agents um, to come to their team and why it would be a great place to be um, as opposed to another team. I mean, how do you think, how do you think scouts would be able to leverage that? And have you ever worked with scouts? Um, <laughs> no, I would say the extent to which I've worked with scouts and I don't want to say too much, but I will say that around the draft, um, I was brought in to do as much digging as I could on social media about what mm -hmm. other teams were doing. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> what about on, on draft picks? Um, I wasn't assigned to look at a player's social media, but there is 100% no doubt in my mind that scout, like, scouts want to know everything that they can know about you. So assume that they are looking at your social media. And if you give them red flags, like that's going to hurt your stock. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I kind of always, yeah, don't, it's back to the don't, don't post bad stuff, right? Yeah. What would you say a coach could do? I and mean, we've talked about how it can benefit their team. What about their personal brands? What, what can a coach do to maybe boost his or her personal brand? Um, you can, again, <laughs> tap into the social media staff uh, at your team. Um, maybe it's just going to them and saying like, hey, can we focus a little bit? Can we create some content focusing on like my position group? Um, it's also just getting like, you know, fans opinions of coaches change week to week. Okay. So your social media can be a good way to like win over fans. <laughs> you mean if you have a bad play and they're not being nice? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, like maybe the you're only good as your last play. Yeah. Anyway. Well, maybe like. <laughs> Maybe after a tough game, you're hosting, again, kind of going back to what we were discussing earlier, you're hosting some kind of, like, bonding night at your house, and fans, you post about that, and fans see that and appreciate, like, okay, he's, you know, like, trying to bring them together, or, like, I'm sure they're talking about what they can do better next week, or whatever, um, and then also, like, I look at, um, Les Miles and Steve Spurrier are not coaching right now, but they are the two front men for Dos Equis this college football season. Um, they have strong brands. Of course, like a lot of that has to do with winning, but they now are making all kinds of money out of coaching. So again, like social media allows you to build your brand for long-term and short-term financial gain. Do you have any quick tips for a coach? Yeah, um, make sure that you're, make sure you're on Instagram. Um, 
turn that profile into a business profile. It'll make you look like more reputable. People will be able to find you faster. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the rule of thumb with regards to recruiting and interacting with recruits um, at, that I've heard is click, don't type. And that just basically says you can interact with their posts, but you can't communicate with them in public on um, social media. But your recruiting staff, I mean, they, like it's their job to know the ins and outs of the rules um, and they can pass that along to you. Right, say that again, click. Click, don't type. Click, don't type, yeah, So there's... for example, like, that's a click. Commenting, that's typing. Okay, what can't you do then? You can't repost it? No, retweeting is a click. Okay. Again, don't type. The finger should not hit the keyboard. At that point, you've potential in type. public, in public, you've committed an infraction. Don't type. Click. Don't type. Click, don't type. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. How many coaches do you think are know that rule? Um, I think a lot because I think they would be in, in loads of trouble if they hadn't learned it already. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, are there any books like you would recommend? Oh, yeah. So there's this guy, Jeremy Darlow. He was the head of football marketing at Adidas. But anyway, um, he has a book, and I've read his other book about athlete branding, but he has a book called Brands Win Championships. Um, if it's anything like the Athletes Are Brands 2 book that I read, um, I would highly recommend it. It it just yeah it's like I guess good place to start if you're interested in like the effects of branding on a on a program which is why I have my clients create a brand first there you go yeah I mean that's back to that because you need your own brand and then you you co-brand with your school yeah it's all it's really important yeah and I know one way uh coaches think branding has to happen is uh with hashtags and all I would say is like be advised that um, hashtags can be used against you. Um, mm. Don't harp on it to the point of like uh, going crazy, but I I mean, I'll just say like Florida State's head coach Willie Taggart has a hashtag um, do something. Um, that's great in terms of like giving effort, but it's bad when your team isn't doing so hot and fans want you to do something about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, a good example would be like USC's 2019 recruiting class. They spell out fight on and the I and the G were a one and a nine. That's clever. Um, Iowa State Cyclones, their hashtag was a storm is brewing. Mm. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of like the first step in, in building the brand now on social media um, in the minds of coaches is like deciding on the hashtag. And that's definitely an important part of it, but it, it's bigger than that. Okay, what about coaches are really busy um, and they're trying to build their personal brand and make sure they're keeping up with their recruiting, but they have a social media staff. How could they work with someone on their social media outside of their team? How, what would that would look like? So, I mean, one way I would recommend employing someone such as myself for example like I can be as involved as speaking directly to your social media staff about like being the mouthpiece for you Mm -hmm. um, and also having kind of like the knowledge and insight and creativity that maybe you don't have about social media to be able to generate generate those ideas um, with your staff or if it's the kind of thing where it they only want to work with you, then I'm kind of the little voice inside your head telling you like, okay, here's what you should be asking them for. Like, here's, you know, things that you should consider, like almost functioning as a consultant. And then, but then they could give the stuff to you and then you could go and post it, right? Yeah. If it's something that, if that's the arrangement you wanted, then absolutely. Yeah. It's just hard sometimes to get it all done. Yeah. Like, you might know what you want it to look like, but, you know, you're also trying to figure out how you're going to beat the next team. Right. Right. That is true. <laughs> Are there any other tips that we didn't talk about? Um, not that I can think of. 
And if more come to mind, well, that is a conversation for you and I to have once you reach out to me. Okay, <laughs> great. Thanks, Grace. Thanks. Thanks for watching my video. If you're a coach or athletics director, please call me or go to my website to get my coach's consulting package and fee structure. You can also subscribe to my podcast called Representation Without Taxation.